In this video we're going to build up a 1-bit memory cell. I think this is probably one of the hardest videos in the series, so stick with it. So let's start off with an SR latch. So what we have here is an active low SR latch. So we've got two NAND gates. The output of one NAND gate feeds into the input of this other NAND gate and the output of this NAND gate feeds into the input of this NAND gate. We've got a set and a reset for our inputs. We've got a Q and a NOT Q for our outputs. Now the Q and NOT Q are complements, which really means that if Q is a zero, then NOT Q is a one. If Q is a one, NOT Q is a zero. So, in order to use this, we see that it's an active low SR latch. That means that it only toggles on the output whenever the input goes from a high state to a low state. Now, what we mean by toggle is that the Q would become a 1 and the NOT Q would become a 0. So, let's look at that working at the moment. So, if I toggle, if I change the input S from a 1 to a 0, you'll see the output toggling. And there we see that toggle there. Now, if I was to do the same with the reset bit, if I change the input from a 1 to a 0, you'll see that toggling. And that's the toggle occurred. Now, this is how we want to use this device. In this state, when the inputs change, the outputs toggle. So let's go ahead and we'll look at this in a truth table. So this is our truth table for our active low SR latch. We have our inputs S and R, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Notice we've repeated 1, 1 twice. We have our outputs Q and not Q. Now the condition 0, 0 is not allowed because this would make Q and its complement not Q equal. So that's called a not allowed condition. And we'll deal with that later on in the video. Now you notice that the state 1, 1 is down twice because 1, 1 could be in either condition. Q could be 1 and not Q could be 0 or Q could be 0 and not Q could be 1. So let's look at the condition where S and R are in conditions 1, 1. So let's take this one, for example, the first one. Let's say we have 1, 1 and Q is 1 and not Q is 0. So that means that if we were to jump down to this condition here, 1, 0 would still be 1, 0. And our value of our S would have changed from 1 to 0. So in this condition, whenever our S changes from 1 to 0, we don't get any change. But if we were in this condition and we jumped from R from 1 to 0, so we would now be going on to 1 and 0, we would toggle because our Q would now be 0 and 1. So maybe a wee bit difficult to follow, so take your time and maybe reverse the video back and you can listen to that one again. So equally, we could look at it in this condition here. We could be in S and R could be 1, 1, and Q could be in 0, and not Q could be in 1. So if we were to jump from this condition here down to this condition, so this would mean that our Q and not Q would still be the same. In this instance here, our R would have gone from 1 to 0. So when we go from this condition here, and our R changes from 1 to 0, we don't get any change on our Q and not Q. So they don't toggle. But equally, if we were in this condition here and our R was to toggle, then we would go from this condition to this condition here. Therefore, our Q would be 1 and our NOT Q would be 0. So that means that our Qs and NOT Q would have toggled because it started off at 0, 1 and now it's 1, 0. So that's a little description of our active low SR latch. So let's go and we'll have a wee look at this in a bit more detail in 
Logisim. So this is our SR latch sitting in the 0, 0 condition. And you can see that the output is 1 and 1. But that's a not allowed state because we want to make sure that these outputs are complements. So we can't have 1 and 1. We can only ever have 0, 1, 1 and 0. And we're going to go and change the circuit just in a minute to ensure that that doesn't occur. So now let's look at the 1, 1 state. So we mentioned in the 1, 1 state that the outputs here could be 0 and 1 or 1 and 0. So at the moment we've got them at 0 and 1. So let's change it. So it's 1 and 0. So now we have the output state is 1 and 0. So we can see that the, with the S and the R being both 1, the output could be 1, 0 or 0, 1. So now in this condition here, we've got S is 1, R is 1. Q is 1 and not Q is 0. It doesn't matter what I do to this S. It has no effect on the output. But now in this condition here, if I was to change the R from a 1 to a 0, then it will toggle. And you can see that toggling here. Now equally, if I was to now toggle the S from high to low, you'll change the S from high to low, you'll see the output toggling. And you can see that toggle there. Now this is the condition in which we will be using this circuit when it toggles like this. So now what we've just built here is a very similar circuit, but we've added in an enable section. So what we have here is an active high SR latch with an enable. Now it's active high because it only toggles whenever it goes from low to high. So it's really the opposite of what we did when we did the active low SR latch. And we've added in this little enable section as well. So nothing will happen at all until the enable goes high. So with the enable low, it doesn't matter what we do with the inputs, nothing's going to happen. So there's nothing happens inputs until the enable goes high. And after the enable goes high, it follows the truth table, which we're going to go and have a look at now. So here we have the truth table for an active high SR latch with an enable. So we have our inputs S and R. Now you'll notice that the S and R are repeated 0 and 0 is repeated twice, as opposed to the act of low where it's 1 and 1. We also have our 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. We also have an enable pin as well. Now the enable can be 1 or 0, but we know that whenever it's at 0, nothing's going to happen. The output just remains as it was previously. So we're only interested really whenever the enable goes high. So let's say the enable sitting at high, and let's take the first condition here where S is 0, R is 0, and we've got our Q is 0, not Q is 1. So we can go from this condition here, and we can jump to this condition down here, where the Q and not Q are still at 0 and 1. So in that case here, what would have happened is, this R would have changed to a 1. So whenever the R changes to a 1 from this state here, we just get the state that we had previously so the 0 and 1 doesn't change it just remains at 0 and 1. Now if we were in this condition here and it changed from our 0 and 1 and it jumped down to our 1 0 which is here you could see here then that what would have changed would have been our set our set would have gone from a 0 to our 1 and that instance there then the output would have toggled. So it's toggled from 0, 1 to 1, 0. So now we have a look in this condition here when S is 0 and R is 0 and we're in position Q1 and not Q is 0. So we're in this line here. So if we go from the 1, 0 at the output and let's say that remains the same at 1, 0 then what will happen is the 
S would have toggled from a 0 to a 1. So in that condition there, when S toggled from a 0 to a 1, the output remains the same. And finally, if we're in this condition, S and R are 0, 0, and Q not Q are 1, 0, and let's say the output had toggled from 1, 0 to 0, 1, then in order for that to be the case, the R must have changed from a 0 to a 1. So if we're in this condition and R changes from 0 to 1, then we toggle the output from 1, 0 to 0, 1. So that covers all of the possible outputs that we have on our Active High SR latch with our Enable. So let's have a final look at this in Logisim. So nothing's going to happen in this circuit whenever the enable is low. We've seen that a second ago, so there's nothing happening at all. The outputs just remain fixed. It's not until the enable goes high that the outputs are able to change. And as we said here, this is an active high. So if we go from a low condition here, it'll only toggle whenever one of the sets or resets goes high. So you can see here that reset there has gone high and it's toggled. So now I can set this high and you can see that that's now toggled so we can continue toggling like that and you can see the output changing the input and the output toggles so now what we want to go and do is we want to change this circuit so that the not allowed condition never ever occurs so that is we never ever want the set and reset to be the same value So that's us made a very simple change. We get rid of one of the pins and we put in a NOT gate between the two inputs. So that ensures that the inputs can never ever be the same. Whenever that's a 1, that will be a 0. Whenever that's a 0, that will be a 1. So now we've got a very interesting little circuit. And this is our 1-bit memory cell. And let's see how that works. Whenever the enable goes high, then this becomes, in effect, a transparent latch. What that means, it just passes this value of S straight through to the output. So we'll get 1, we'll get 1, 0, 0. And we're just passing it straight through. But whenever the enable goes low, whenever we change this value for set, nothing will happen on the output. So in effect, it saved that one bit of memory whenever we put the enable low and whenever we put the enable high again we can change the condition of the memory cell so let's say we want to put a zero into the memory cell that's a zero in the memory cell and the zero is now fixed in the memory cell when we change the input the input doesn't change so in effect we've found a neat little way of storing one bit of information so another thing to note here is that we're not really interested in this not Q section. We can just get rid of it. So we could just delete this off here. And we really would have our little memory cell here. But we're going to be using one, two, three, four, five gates for this memory cell. And we can simplify it down to four gates. So let's go and do that next. So this is our final 1-bit memory cell and it's built out of 4 NAND gates and we can see how this is going to work. Let's say we wanted to pass a value into a memory location. So let's say we wanted to pass the value 0 into the memory location. So 0 is sitting here waiting to get into the memory location. Whenever the enable goes high, we can then pass that value through into the memory location. Whenever the enable goes low, the value is now held in that memory location, so it doesn't matter what we do with this S, that value of 0 
is held within that memory location. So let's go ahead and we'll go and we'll build our instance for this. So we go into project, add circuit, and we'll call this CPU underscore mem underscore one. And you can see it's appeared here. So we can get into main and we'll cut and paste. Control X, Control V, and then we can get in here and we'll recreate our circuit so that the appearance is a little bit better. So we can just make it a, a square shape. So that's us finally completed our one bit memory cell. It means we can get into main and we've got access to this cell. So we have got one of them there. Of course, we can take copies of this and we can create two bits, three bits, four bits, and eventually we can work away and create an eight bit memory cell. So that's what we're going to go and do on the next video. So thank you for listening to this video. I'll get you in the next video. Goodbye.